Hey guys, it's Mrs. Krauss, and in this video we're going to be talking about the effect that meiosis, another type of cell division, has on the number of chromosomes in the daughter cells. So this is just a little refresher of mitosis. In mitosis, we're making new cells that have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell, and the new cells that we're making are normal body cells for multicellular organisms. So for us, that could include bone cells or skin cells or blood cells or muscle cells, et cetera, et cetera. And here's just a little diagram showing us how in humans, a normal body cell has 46 chromosomes which means it's considered diploid. It has two full sets of 23 chromosomes each. Now that parent cell is gonna divide during mitosis to create two daughter cells and each one has 46 chromosomes as well. So they are considered diploid cells too. Okay, meiosis is a little bit different. Um, the goal of meiosis is to make sex cells that have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. The two types of sex cells in humans are eggs in females and sperm in males, and they have to have half the number of chromosomes as a normal cell so that they can come together and create a baby that has 46 chromosomes. So in humans, we have a parent cell that's found in the ovaries or the testes, and it's diploid. It has 46 chromosomes. It goes through the first round of meiosis, which is called meiosis one, and we end up with two daughter cells, but each one has 23 chromosomes. So they're now considered haploid cells because they have half the number of chromosomes as a diploid cell, meaning they have one set of 23 chromosomes. Now those two daughter cells divide again during meiosis two, and we end up with Believe it or not, 23 chromosomes in each of those four daughter cells. So those would all be considered haploid as well because they have one set of chromosomes. So let's figure out exactly how this works. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so metaphase one occurs a little bit differently than metaphase of mitosis. So metaphase one is going to be um, during our first round of division, meiosis one, in ovary or testes cells um, with the ultimate goal of making eggs and sperm. So let's say we had four chromosomes and this parent cell in our testes or ovaries um, has four chromosomes instead of 46. It's a diploid cell. Let's say each set of chromosomes is two, so two sets would be four chromosomes. We call these chromosomes replicated because they have two chromatids, meaning they have two identical copies of DNA. Now, if I look here, I see big A1 and big A2. Big A1 and big A2 are supposed to represent those chromatids or identical copies of DNA. And I also see over here, that I have little a1 and little a2, which are also supposed to represent chromatids. Why have I used the same letter for these two chromosomes? Well, this is considered a homologous pair of chromosomes. A homologous pair of chromosomes uh, has the same types of genes in the same places. However, on these two homologous chromosomes, they might have different forms of that gene. So let's say they both have the I color gene, that would be a type of gene, located somewhere on the chromosome. However, the big A chromosome has the gene form for blue eyes, and the little A chromosome has the gene form for brown eyes. So they're the same type of gene, eye color, but they might be a different form of that gene. Now within a homologous pair, you got one of the chromosomes from your mother and one of them from your father. So in this case, it looks like we have two homologous pairs of chromosomes, and the first one is A's, the second one is B's. So we have the big B chromosome over here and the little B chromosome over here. Now notice, they are lining up at the center of our dividing cell during metaphase one, however, they are not lining up single file, one, two, three, four, down a straight line like we would in metaphase of mitosis. Instead, they're lining up by homologous pair. So instead of having four chromosomes in a line, 
we have two pairs. So that's metaphase one. During anaphase one, our spindle fibers are going to split the pairs of homologous chromosomes. So they both still have their chromatids, so we still have A1 and A2 within this a, big A chromosome, and we still have little a1 and little a2 within this little a chromosome. So we've split the homologous pairs and we're pulling our chromosomes to opposite ends of the dividing cell. If we were to draw a line down the middle of this cell to represent the two daughter cells that would result, both of our daughter cells would have two chromosomes in them. So what we've done is we've split the number of chromosomes in half. We started out with a parent cell that had four chromosomes, big A, little a, big B, and little b. And now we've ended up with one daughter cell on our left that has two chromosomes, big A and big B, and our daughter cell on the right that also has two chromosomes, little a and little b. Okay. Now let's say we took those two daughter cells. Remember we have big A and little b in our daughter cell on the left. I'm sorry, big A and big B in our daughter cell on the left and little a and little b in our daughter cell on the right. So that's what we've kind of set up here. And let's say these two daughter cells are now going to start going through meiosis 2. So meiosis 1 was simply splitting those homologous pairs and it gave us daughter cells that are both haploid. They have half the number of chromosomes as their original parent cell, which was four. So now they have two, but they're still replicated, meaning they still look like X's because they have both chromatids. Now during meiosis two, specifically metaphase two, those chromosomes are gonna line up single file at the center of the dividing cell, just like they do during mitosis. We often say that meiosis II is very similar to mitosis for a couple reasons. One of those reasons is that our chromosomes line up single file at the center of the cell. They don't line up in pairs like they do in meiosis I. So if we continued to anaphase II, we would see that our big A chromosome is going to be split into big A1 and big A2. Before they split, they were called chromatids. Now, they're considered full daughter chromosomes. Okay, so we see that all of our chromosomes have been split down the middle and we're pulling the daughter chromosomes to opposite ends of the dividing cell. And remember, when we pulled them apart, they kind of inverted, so they now look a little bit like boomerangs. Okay, and if we were to draw dividing lines down the center of these cells to represent our four daughter cells, it would look something like this. Here we have our daughter cells of meiosis two. So after both meiosis one and meiosis two have taken place, we're gonna end up with four daughter cells. They're considered haploid because they only have two chromosomes in them. This one has big A and big B. This one also has big A and big B. This one has little a and little b. This one also has little a and little b. They are a little bit different from the daughter cells of meiosis one because they don't have both chromatids. They're not replicated anymore. Now, they are unreplicated although I did still leave the little chromatid numbers, just so you know what ends up where. Okay, so at this point we see how we've gone from a parent cell that had four replicated chromosomes that looked like X's to dot four daughter cells that are haploid. They have two unreplicated chromosomes that don't look like X's anymore. Okay. So if we were looking at a real human cell, again, instead of having four chromosomes in our diploid parent cell, we would have 46 chromosomes. 
in meiosis I, we would be cutting that chromosome number in half because we're splitting pairs of homologous chromosomes. So we would end up with two daughter cells that are haploid. They have one set of chromosomes, which in humans is 23. And that would be half the number of chromosomes in our original parent cell. During meiosis II, which is very similar to mitosis, we are taking these two cells and dividing them to create four haploid daughter cells. And these daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes, 23, as their parent cells, which are the daughter cells of meiosis I. So just like we maintained the chromosome number, we kept it at 23 during meiosis II, this is very similar to what happened in mitosis, where we maintained the chromosome number, starting with 46 and ending with 46 in the daughter cells. So again, we often compare mitosis and meiosis II in that regard. Okay, I hope this was helpful.